500 years ago, Ireland had an identity, language, culture, and social order distinct from England. Like other countries, Ireland absorbed the influences and ideas of conquerors who had come and gone, each leaving reminders of their presence on the land. Picts, Celts, Vikings, Normans, all had come to Ireland. These influences merged with the distinctive tradition of Roman Catholicism, which had been kept alive in Ireland during Europe's Dark Ages. Together, they produced the uniquely Gaelic culture and heritage of Ireland. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands and looking up to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. This has had a lasting effect on Ireland. Today, the majority of the population is still Catholic, and the Catholic Church and its ideas have a dominant position in Irish society. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. In the Republic of Ireland, it is estimated that 90% of the people attend Mass at least once a week. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 500 years ago, all of Christian Europe was Catholic, under the authority of the Pope in Rome. But by 1500, the Catholic Church was becoming decadent and corrupt. Those who began to reject the Church of Rome in protest became known as Protestants. This reformation of the Church, a revolution of spiritual ideas, began in North Germany and soon spread to other countries in Europe, including England. Such a vast religious upheaval had great political ramifications. In a divided Europe, England found itself surrounded by Catholic powers, with Catholic Ireland at its back door. This was very critical to England. Here was a Catholic country on its doorstep, which it hadn't got proper control of, which it didn't only govern a part of, really, in any effective way. And Catholic powers were ready to land there, or harbour there, or whatever. And so Ireland, from that point onwards, indeed, for the next three centuries, becomes of extraordinary strategic importance to the British and also to Brit Britain's enemies. If the Catholic powers of Europe formed an alliance with Catholic Ireland, then Protestant England would be threatened from two sides. It was this vision of Europe that worried the Tudor monarchs. Henry VIII decided that Ireland should be brought into the orbit of England. This policy was continued by Elizabeth I, who concluded that Gaelic civilization would have to be crushed. There had been an English presence in Ireland since the 12th century, now limited to an area around Dublin called the Pale, shown in red. There had also, had also been a continuous Scottish migration to the northeast, which is only 13 miles from Scotland at the nearest point. But it was a series of Gaelic risings, beginning in Leash Offaly, that gave the, Eng gave the English the opportunity to suppress the Irish. In the southwest, loyal English settlers were planted on the lands of the defeated Gaelic nobility. And in Monaghan, more land was confiscated from the local chieftains. But this left one of the most Gaelic regions of Ireland still fiercely resistant to English rule. An English expeditionary force was sent out to put down the rebellious province of Ulster in the north. They were to face Ulster rebels reinforced with Spanish troops. However, in the end, the Gaelic armies could not match the tight ranks of Elizabethan cavalry. The Ulster men were defeated in battle. Their leaders were too proud to submit themselves to the humiliation of foreign occupation. Later, they fled from Ulster, leaving their lands open for the taking. So, the largest plantation of all took place. In 1609, the six Gaelic counties of Ulster 
was systematically planted with loyal English and Scottish settlers. It established in Ireland a Protestant landowning aristocracy, essentially a Protestant ruling class through the various confiscations and gifts of land from the 16th and 17th century. It provided Ireland with a depressed Catholic community who had lost power, who had lost prestige, and who had lost land. Now Gaelic Ireland yielded to English authority. The new settlers were forced to build castles to defend themselves. These Protestant sentinels were seen as bastions of Anglo-Scottish rule in Ulster. The settlers also brought with them a new culture, a new language and new laws. As arable farmers, they leveled the forests and tilled the soil in a different way to the pastoral Irish. Their houses looked different. Their castles were built on the English model with a keep surrounded by a stockade. But Gaelic civilization was not destroyed, merely overlaid with this new, powerful Anglo-Scottish landowning class. They saw themselves, I suppose, as colonizers, sometimes even as civilizers, because they brought their own customs and their own uh, mental luggage with them, and they simply um, expected that uh, the natives would either adopt those customs or would keep themselves to themselves and not interfere with the settlers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Part of the mental luggage of these new settlers was their Protestantism. Many were Anglican Protestants, but there were also a large contingent of dissenters, the majority being Presbyterian. They brought energy and enterprise to building a new life in Ulster. And the power and the glory, forever and forever. Amen. The descendants of these settlers are the Protestants of Ulster. In Northern Ireland today, they still form a majority of the population. Attendance at a church service in Northern Ireland is an important affirmation of identity. The Catholics at Mass, the Protestants at worship. Is him an object, after he accepts Jesus Christ, is always to live for others. In retrospect, it was religion that provided the most obvious source of division between the Anglo-Scottish and the Irish. It became a badge for all the political, cultural and racial differences between settler and native. The Ulster plantation left the native resentful and the settler beleaguered. Religion became the justification for any injustice or outrage. To the Irish, the plantation castle symbolized the alien regime which had seized their land. The dispossessed banded together to nurse their grievances. Sporadic attacks on isolated settlements culminated in a bloody rising in 1641. Historians still disagree as to what happened. Mythology and history have become entangled. However, in Protestant England, the rumors of massacres of planter settlements were widely believed and provoked outrage and horror. I a true relation of the bloody massacre and damnable treason of the cruel papists. An impression of the hysteria evoked by rumours of the rising comes from this pamphlet written by an English Presbyterian. Driving men, women and children by hundreds upon bridges and casting them into rivers, those who drowned not were killed Pulling with poles and shot by the hair on their heads, dashing the children's brains against the posts. They tore off his ears and nose, tore off his cheeks, then cut off his arms and legs. The minister was hanged and the flesh was pulled from his bones in his wife's sight. They stripped the two eldest children who were seven years of age, roasted them on spits before their parents' faces. They cut their throats and afterwards murdered them. <laughs> 